And then it's my great pleasure to introduce Young Liu from uh, CISA and Trieste. We'll talk on cyclic structure behind the modular Gaussian curvature. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for, the, for the, this invitation. It's my great honor to be able to speak in this uh, global non-commutative geometry seminar, especially in Europe. So, so I think I, I gave a, a similar talk, like a, a talk uh, on the same topic, uh, I think two weeks ago. So I will have to apologize to, to those audi audience like who or already watched that, that talks. It, maybe it's a little bit boring, but uh, well, I will try to make some, some new comments in, in the talk to, <coughs> to compensate. Okay, so, so here is the, I will make it, let's try to remove this. So here is the, the outline of, of my talk. So, so first of all, I will introduce a, a, as a motivation, a simple functional relation attached to, to the, to the notion of a modular Gaussian curvature, so discovered by Kohn and Moscovici. So from here, I will yes, what's behind that is a sort of a, a sort of variational calculus. So so it's a kind of a calculus with so now we are dealing with a operator valued coordinates. So and then the, so so the main result is basically to show that this such a calculus is somehow governed by certain uh, cyclic structures. So at the end, so I will um, uh, make some comparisons with the, with the sort of the cyclic structure and the, the Hof, Hof cyclic theory behind. So, so, okay, so as usual, so I'd like to start with, uh, you know, in this, the basic, one of the basic paradigms in non-commutative geometry, so the, the spectral triple paradigm. So in non-commutative geometry, a, a geometric space is, is given by the following spectral data. So here you have the algebra A, so which plays the role of some coordinate functions on some space. And uh, so it has a representation, star representation embedded as a subalgebra of bounded operators on H. So, so where the, the geometry uh, comes in with, uh, with this Dirac operator. So, <coughs> so uh, the, the basic requirement is that uh, the Dirac operator is self-adjoint, it has compact resolvents, and uh, the, the, the commutator with elements in A, they are bounded operators on H. So this is sort of a basic requirement somehow allows you to say define A like a K homology class attached to such a special triple. So here I listed two, two examples. So the first one is the, uh, the model of the spectral triple is, is the cons model for, for spin uh, geometry. So once you have a spin manifold, so you can, the algebra, you're taken to be the, the algebra of smooth functions on the manifold. The Hilbert space is the L2 sections of, uh, of the <coughs> uh, spinorial bundle. So, and then this, uh, this slash the D is the spinorial Dirac operator. So another example I would like to mention is the is the sort of a, our favorite example in non-commutative geometry. So the non-commutative tori. So so the algebra is the, the smooth functions on non-commutative tori. So this H here H is the two copies of this L two functions. So in the in a more operator theoretical language, this is the this H this L two function functions is the it's obtained by, by so you have a, you have a, tra a canonical trace, which is a tracial functional on this algebra. And then you take the standard GNS constructions so that then you op obtain this, uh, this L2 functions. Here H is the two copies of that. And, and here is the Dirac operator. So, and Delta one and the Delta two, they are the, the basic derivations on non commutator tori. So they, 
you can think of them as minus i times a uh, so this is just a so minus i times the partial say x2 so this is x1 x2 they are say they are the, the coordinate functions on on two torus that the so so here this i is the is the modular parameter is the 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 parameter for, for, for the for the usual complex structures on 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 torus. So so this uh, this Dirac operator gives you a, a, a flat metric. So here's seems I'm going to so here I just I mentioned this example because I just want to review the the basic notations for for non or okay so so once you have a a spectral triple. So I think so. There are many directions you can you can follow. So I one of the the main thing is that you can study the the zeta function, the the spectral zeta function attached to this uh, spectral triple. So you consider the the powers of these absolute values or of this Dirac operator. So so here you want to put a so put an so arbitrary, arbitrary a element in a here. So for example, this is a viewed as a linear functional in, in A. So, so actually, so one often have to refine this, uh, this, uh, this basic requirement so that you can establish this uh, meromorphic continuation of, the, of, of this zeta function. And uh, the, the residues from this uh, meromorphic continuation, they are sort of uh, some some like a God given functionals, which will lead to many, many applications. So here, like a, I would like to mention a three sort of a big achievements in non commutative geometry. So, so uh, behind which there is a, a lot of a sort of a rearrangement techniques going on. So which should be somehow the, the main topic of my talk. So, so the so this uh, the local index formula and this modular geometry. So they are both they both due to Kohn and um, Moskovici. So this uh, local index formula is sort of a so global aspects of, of this non commutative geometry. It concerns like a differential topological like invariance like index. So and then the the, the second and the third they concerns the sort of the, the local geometry. It's like a so given you a spectral triple, right? So, the, so with respect to the metric D represented by this Dirac operator, then what kind of a local invariance can we like uh, extrapolate out of this? So, so, <laughs> so this uh, spectral action principle I think is initiated by, by Kohn and Ali Shamsuddin. So, so, uh, so I will make some, uh, some comparisons comparisons between between the last two so okay before doing that i think so there is a so when we talk about the zeta function i think so it's it's hard to, to not mention the this melon transform which is a important techniques to so it's like many important zeta functions can be obtained by using this uh melon transform arguments so it's like a so so here is the definition of the Mellon transform. So this uh, somehow it's a, so, so, so basically it's a, it somehow transforms the, the, the asymptotic behavior of, of this phi. So phi is a nice function on, on the positive real line. So, so this, you have asymptotic at zero and infinity here, we assume a nice, the, the, this, uh, this phi has a roughly decay at infinity. So, so we, we ease this, uh, we, we somehow, so now the, the infinity side is we fixed, it's, it's nice. And then, so at zero, so we have this, uh, we assume we have this asymptotic expansion. So if, if alpha, they are, they are the integer powers, means that you have this uh, Taylor expansion, means that the phi is smooth at, at zero in particular, right? So, but anyhow, so we can, we don't have to restrict to, to, to integer power. So we assume we have some asymptotic expansion at, at zero. And then this asymptotic expansion somehow will transform to the, 
to the rescues of, 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 of the Z function. So, so by, by this uh, Mellon transform technique. So, so a, a, a typical example, like a, in number theory is that we, you take this uh, generating function, take phi to be the generating function of Bernoulli numbers. And then the, the Mellon, Mellon transforms gives you the, so up to a, a gamma factor gives you the, the, the Z function of, of Riemann in this. So, so net now the you know the balloon numbers associated to associated to the to the special values of, of, of the of the zeta function. So, so, so basically, so so keep this in mind, and then you kind of uh, behind this uh, uh, behind this uh, the standard zeta function. So you kind of have some free free choice of, of this of this phi. So so. Yes, the, <coughs> so the special, special action principle is considered it's kind of a, some, some f of u, some positive even function on r. It's, it's kind of a, the similar role of, of, of this phi in the, in the previous slides, right? So you don't have to consider exactly the, the, zeta, fun, the zeta function or, or, or the heat, or heat trace function, exponential function. So, so you have some free choice of f and then you, you you introduce of the of a, of a scaling parameter lambda. So and then then you study this trace. So uh, the this meromorphic extent continuation so will corresponds to the to some expansion of this trace as the power of, of lambda. So so in, in special action principle. So probably we can for example. So consider like a two type of uh, questions. So for example, you can find a, a so it depends on your application, you can find some sort of a God given function F, right? So which like a uh, recover whatever important notions in, in application. So here the, here's a, in this reference is a paper uh, of uh, Khan, Shan Sadim and Man Sulikon. So, so, so this, uh, they, in this paper, they, they found a sort of a God-given function f, so, so and then it recovered the, the, the information theoretical von Neumann entropy functional used from this uh, spectral action. So another type of question is that uh, you can study this, uh, you fix f, you fix d in this template, then you give a perturbation of d, say, say y via uh, Put potential one form. So then you sort of, a, you have a function, then you have a, so this difference, so gives you a functional in this one form. And then you want to study the, this, this functional. So, so we are maybe this still using this uh, asymptote, using this expansion. So, so there are, yes, two typical type of questions in this. Uh, so we can ask, so once uh, from this uh, spectral, spectral action principle. So actually, so, so both of them, they are sort of the, so the, they are both motivated by, by this uh, very well-known results in, in the spectral geometry of, uh, for, say for closed Riemannian manifold. So, so now you take this function to be the, to be sort of a, exponential function so so e to the minus t u square so and then then so it has a then such a trace has a small time asymptotic expansion so like an expansion around like a for small t so and then this uh the, the this coefficient they are local like they are linear functionals in, in a so this uh this coefficients they encode the local invariance associated to to the to the reminder metric so the, for example, that the first very first coefficient a zero, so so it's a it's basically the volume function, right? So this cm, uh, and if you take take the function a to be one, then you see this is the volume and the cm. The, so this cm so it, it's important to to the to the Weyl's law. So it, which means that, uh, so you can sort of uh, detect the, the the dimension of the manifold and the, the volume. Uh, from from this asymptotic behavior of the the eigenvalues of, of the Dirac operators, so then you go further. So so, so the a two. So now the so so now you can detect like a sort of a deeper invariance, deeper in the sense of the the order of the derivatives. Now you can detect 
you know, second derivative so of the matrix, so, so the while known invariance attached to the second derivative of, of, the, of the metric is the, the scalar, scalar curvature function. So, so the second curve, so the, the second heat coefficients, so the, if you view this as functional, so you recover this Einstein Hilbert action. So yes, so that's the sort of the, uh, the, the the starting point of, of, of the modular geometry, which will be talked about in the next slide. So, so okay, so this, so this model to, to, you know, to, to, uh, to probe local invariance, so uh, can be easily adapted to the, to the case of a non-commit, to, to the case of some nine, really nice uh, non-commutative manifolds. So the, the of course the best known example is the the non commutative non two tori. So so here so we want to uh, study the, the the conformal geometry. So so we study let's just, we start with to say the the flat uh, spectral triple. So mention the so probably I can jump back. So so here is the the flat spectral triple. So you have a flat metric to to start with. And uh, then, then you want to sort of uh, implement such a conformal change of the metric. So, so now you choose a self adjoint coordinates and take ex exponential so that it, so now you have a positive invertible elements. So, so e to the h, it plays the role of the, the conformal factor. So you can sort of, okay, think about the, you can ask the question like, uh, what's the sort of the, the conform, corresponding conformal change of metric, right? So, so on on non commutative So with respect to the G zero is is the flat metric. So at level of, of the Laplacian, so the, the the change of a Laplacian is 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 given by this uh, the following perturbation. So you put the the two the the, the two the vial factors on two sides of the of, of the flat Laplacian. Whatever in the middle is the 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 flat Laplacian is just the Delta one square plus uh, delta two square, say. So, well, for for high dimension, I think, but uh, so this uh, this only probably the only the leading term of of, of the Laplacian. But uh, well, that's a. Uh, so, but the, the low order term, like uh, the conceptually, they are less concerned in in the, in the main topic of, of of this talk. So, so I would just take the yes. Let's just take the, this simple perturbation. So as the as a model, as a so on on dimension two, I think in in dimension two, I think it's a precise model for for the for the conformal change of metric. So okay, so so I think the the bottom line is that you have a now you introduce a coordinates of of h, and then you you. So now then you you consider this a uh, similar this difference. So then you have a, a functional in, in, in this H. So I think that what's the sort of the main, uh, one of the difference between the sort of a, this uh, conformal geometry and the, or the modular geometry versus this uh, spectral triple action is that uh, in, the, in the spectral triple action, so we take this perturbation like a D to, to D plus A. So where A is a, is a one form, uh, <coughs> So now you, in this is uh, what's behind in this is like a, you, you put D to the to this uh, to this following perturbation. So so now so so here A is in a sort of a, in degree it's like a degree zero term. It's a so 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 Dirac operator usually is a first order uh, differential operator. So now you you perturb by by a by a one form potential. So you you change the the lower order term. But in 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 here when you change it. When you consider the, the question related to, to changing matrix, so then you, you kind of uh, you, you change the, the leading term in, in, in here. So you so here you, you change the leading term. So it's so conceptually, so I think that the computation in here in the second case is uh, is more complicated. So so that's why I think so so when you consider these questions, so you can perform like a delicate computation in a in a quite abstract framework. So now, so, so because of uh, this, this question is, uh, so when you perturb, 
like the, the leading term of your, of your geometric operator, then you need a more delicate calculus to, to, to really compute, to understand this, uh, this difference in, in terms of H. So in this case, we, what's behind it, we need a, a pseudo differential calculus, like a, a much more delicate tool in here. So that's why, so this, uh, so this, uh, this, uh, this computation for conformal geometry now, so far it's only performed on, on, on nice examples, like, uh, like on non commutator Torah, you can do it. And, and I, I, I did it on, on this uh, theta deformed, uh, <laughs> A reminder, nice reminder manifolds. So that's a. So okay. So, so in this, uh, when you look at this uh, Gauss Bonnet theorem, so it's kind of a, it's first achieved uh, in a, by by Kohn and Trekhoff, and uh, ex extended by by. By, by Fazard and, and Masu. So 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 for the Gauss Bonnet theorem, so it it. it it only somehow concerns this, this integration of, uh, of, of the scalar curvature function. So, so later, and uh, Korn and Moskovici finished uh, the computation for the, for the full A2 term. So now we have the, the full information of the scalar curvature and the, the, the computation uh, was independent, it independently uh, carried out and then confirmed by, by also uh, Fazard and, and Masoud. So, so, and then with, with the full information, so we can somehow consider study this uh, sort of a conformal anomaly attached to the ray single determinant. So, and then I think it's a study with the works, work of uh, Polyakov. I, I think we know that uh, this uh, conformal anomaly. So when you consider some variational questions, you can also recover uh, the notion of scalar curvature. So, so uh, in uh, in Komoskovich's paper, so so they used uh, the model from from the on from the paper of uh, Oscar Philip Sonak. So so they consider sort of uh, the following. Uh, I would say this is uh, normalized uh, the racing. So this term is the Reisinger determinant, right? It's just the. Uh, so since since so. so we don't get any like a uh, more information like from variation about this zeta function at, at zero. And then sort of the next candidates will be the first derivative of the zeta function at zero. So, so this, uh, this uh, actual term is just a normalization to make this functional like a translation invariance. So, and then, so on, re, on, on a classical Riemann surface. So if you, if you compute the, the, the gradient flow, uh, Attached to this functional, so you can recover the the Ricci flow. So, in other words, so 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 let me uh, explain in deep a little bit more detail what's the so how to set up this uh, gradient uh, flow on in, in our sort of uh, functional analytic language. So, so any questions so far? So, okay, so, so now you have a functional in H. H is just a so self adjoint elements. So in, in, this, uh, in this coordinate algebra, you can think of this as the, the parameter of the, of the tangent space of, of your conformal class of, a, of your conformal class of, a, of metric, of metrics. So because, because the conformal, Factor is e to the h, right? So h is kind of at the, the coordinates at, at for the for the tangent space. So, so now so on this tangent space you can give a, a perturbation, right? So, so along some another self adjoint direction, and then you, you just consider the variation. You want to take the derivative in epsilon and then you evaluate. If you, you take evaluation at, at epsilon equals zero, so, so you consider this a. Uh, uh, this uh, very variational <coughs> uh, variational problem. So, so then, what's the notion of derivative? So, well, so to to define derivative in this uh, in this setting, so we need a sort of a, a inner product. So this uh, this inner product 
is given provided by, by this uh, canonical trace V0. So you can think of a, a, just a notion of, of integration. So, so with this, so, so then you, you can define that. Uh, so you consider because this variation is, is, a, is a linear functional in, in, the, on the, in, the, in the parameter A here, right? So, so if you can find a elements in, in, this, uh, in this algebra, such that this abstract, the, the abstract functional on the left-hand side can be understood as the, this integration of A times this, I will call this a grad of F as a, as a density, right? So it's like, a, and then, so this, this density will be the, is defined to be the, the, the functional gradients. So that's the, the quantity that we want to compute. So basically, so the, you know, the classical result that the, the, the gradient flow of the of of the of the of the functional OPS recovers Ricci flow. So uh, it means uh, so now we, we translate it to 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 this to the to this language. It, it says that uh, so now so this grad of f is a uh, is the is actually recovers the the the, the Gaussian curvature in this. So now so so we can take this a uh, this quantity as as the definition uh, of of the Gaussian curvature. So so by the way so so in here so you can so from here so you can already you can make the first definition as the, you, you can compute the density for this a two coefficient. So as as the you know the analog of uh, the modular scalar curvature. So, so after you know it's explicit computation, one can show that uh, this, uh, I mean, the density here, and uh, the and uh, this density from variation, they are, uh, so they are sort of uh, quite close to each other. So, so, uh, so they are only differed by by a very simple factor. So, so I'm, I think this uh, this uh, this coit. This agreement somehow reflects the, this, uh, you know, in a classical case, you know, the the scalar curvature and the Gaussian curvature like a differ by a fa factor of two. So, but uh, but uh, if we take this uh, this curvature, this 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 definition, so even though it's a it requires more effort, right? To more effort here to define and compute, but. Uh, so, but uh, from this variational, you know, definition, so indeed we, you can say something non-trivial about about this uh, about this uh, modular Gaussian curvature because of this uh, this variational nature in here. So that's the, going to be the sort of a, a simple functional relations, which is the the main topic of my first part uh, of the first first part of my talk. The, so, so any questions so far? So, so, so this is so the setup. So, so after some heavy computation, so one can compute uh, explicitly what's the what's this function f sub OPS. So, so you have an explicit formula like in terms of the of the log while factor h. So. And then you can compute this uh, this its gra functional gradient, this gradient. So, so, so here, so, so compared to so here, what's new in the in the non commutative uh, in the non commutative geometry is 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 the it's due to the fact that uh, this h and, and the delta j of h h coordinates and the derivative they do not commute. So we have to introduce some rearrangement operators like. T of this uh, this modular derivation and a K and H. So so in, in in the classical case, say say you you take the deformation parameter theta to, to zero. So and then the, these are T K and H. So become some functions. So you, you just becomes like T of zero. So H of zero zero. So so that's the. So this number is the, then then you take this number you. you you, you will recover the, the classical results on, on say, on, on the usual commutative torus. So, so here, so, 
So here we we use we make use of these commutators so, so to somehow to perform a rearrangement. Once we have a something, we have a some h on the right hand side of delta of h. We want to move it to the very left. So so and then then we can combine all the terms together. So then sort of a, all these uh, these ansatz caused by this non-commutativity can be sort of uh, compressed into into this uh, real, I will call this a uh, rearrangement operators. So at this slide, let's take this. You can first of all you can think of this t, k, and h. They are say for example polynomial functions, right? Right in some form or variable, and and then this and then here this a uh, one and two. So it's a uh, it's, it's it's like a this is a uh, this a uh, Modular derivation tensor one and this is one tensor modular derivation means that uh, so this one only acts on the first factor and, and the two only acting only acts on the on the second factor. So, so, so you can also probably think of like a, this one and two is like a, the one and two in in the in the Swedler notation for for co-product like in a quantum group setting. So it's like a so. So and then these are t, k, and h. There are some very explicit functions. So, so here I give you the explicit formula for for the uh, for the for this function k. So so it's a so it's, it's kind of a generating function of a, of Bernoulli numbers. So I think that's also a, a sort of a important features observed in in the, in Kohn and Moskovich's Moskovich's formula. So first of all, it says that the, the such a function floating around, so there are not some, they, there are some sort of a special functions of, of, of common interest in, in different areas in, in mathematics, I think so. So, so any questions so far? So, so the, I think the, the main topic of, of this, uh, this talk is like, I would like to study the, this, uh, this variation of, of, of this operator, like how does it depend on H? Remember this, uh, this, uh, this commutator is, 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 the, is the commutator with respect to H, right? Okay, so, okay, so, so to, to conclude the first section, so, so here, look, this formula is kind of uh, the, this Euler-Lagrange equation of, of, of this function because of, of our you know, variational definition. So then we expect this, uh, this k and h as the coefficient of, of this differential operator, right? So then they, they have some, they should be, have some relations because it, it is the, it's not some random uh, differential equation, random like a second differential operator. It is the Euler-Lagrangian equation for some geometric functional. So then what's this, uh, what, what are the relations between this k and h? So, so here is the functional, the simple functional. So uh, discovered by by Kohn and Moskovici. So 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 H can be obtained from K by 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 by, by the second line. So so once you 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 stare at the, the, this formula, so probably you can. There are some observations. The first one is that you, if you look at these three terms, so so the, I think the, the my the first observation is that uh, so this uh, pop into your eye probably that's the sort of the the divided difference <laughs> structures in in these three terms. So actually, so if you put a, a minus here, so then you can see that every term so is is of this form of of this divided difference. So Actually, because uh, one can show that uh, this uh, this case an uh, even function, so that uh, indeed we are allowed to, to put a minus sign in, in here. So then every of term this uh, is of the form of some divided difference, and then this uh, this observation, well, is is due to Lash. So, so <clears throat> I think so. I think that I think that my the, the main result of my talk, I think it's a. I think it's some, somehow uh, I think uh, deeply influenced by by Lash's paper of a uh, non uh, divided difference divided difference in non commutative geometry. I think so. 
And then, so, so once you have this divided difference, you take the confluent case, means that you, you, you can set x1, x2 to, to each other formally, means that you, you take the limit, oops. And then, then it, the limit is, then you recover the, the, the derivative. So then you, then you recover the derivative of, of, uh, of f. So, and the, the last obse observation somehow is, uh, is less obvious is the, is you have sort of a, if you look at the three terms, you have some um, cyclic permutations around this, uh, around the three terms. So. So, and then as you expect that the, 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 this, uh, this cyclic permutation is, uh, it turns out to be the, the cyclic group, like the action of the cyclic group in the, in the, in the cyclic structure. So that's, uh, so we will see that at the end, so. Okay. I cannot remove this. Uh... Hmm. What did I do? So... Somehow I cannot remove this uh, this random drawing. So I, I use clear, so I just undo. Wait, it doesn't work. Okay, so 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 okay. Let me let me try to continue. So so first of all, let me uh, just ex explain a little bit about my personal journey about to to thinking about it, uh, this this functional relation. So the first step is like I was perf perform like a compu computation for for higher dimensional example like a higher dimensional uh, non commutatorized So so the first step is the so I, I found some similar functional relations, but uh, somehow much more complicated by right, compared to the to to these three term relations in, in here. So, and and also Fazad he, he studied the uh, you know so the example of non commutative for, for Torah, So I think he obtained the, the same uh, relations like in in his computation. So. So, and then I, I did this computation like uh, several times. So finally, I, I realized that uh, this, uh, like this, somehow these many terms, indeed, they when when you add them up, so they they have cancellations when you add them up. So you can re we can recover indeed a simple like a three term functional relations like like th like this. So so and then so I think it was like in uh, 2019. So I I, I share this. Uh, Results with Alan, so so I I sort of uh, explain my sort of my conceptual understanding about this uh, cancellation behind behind these terms. So and then he pointed it out immediately that uh, so so you know the relations that I, I I showed to to him is is exactly the the compatibility relations between in the in the cyclic category between the simplicial and and the cyclic structure. So and so basically the, the main result of, of, of this talk is sort of a, a more comprehensive uh, understanding uh, of Alan's vision on this subject. In this. So, so any questions? So, so, so maybe so, sorry, Yang, you may want to kind of share again your screen so that that you drop the because it will remain like these things. Yes, right? yes. Let me let me try to stop sharing, and I will share again. So. Okay, that works. So. Can everyone see my screen now? Yeah, that works perfect. Okay, yes. okay, good. So, okay, so, 
another motivation that I would like to, you know, to gain more understanding about this, uh, this functional relations is the, is the, the computation for, for, the, for the A to A4 term. So, so for, the, for the higher, uh, for, for higher heat coefficients. Okay, good. So here a four term means that you are in, so you want to extract the fourth derivative invariance from uh, formed by, by the fourth derivative of, of your metric. And then you have a similar, so, so, so I, yes, here I'm talking about the, 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 the computation. So in, in a paper uh, of, a, of a Fazad and, and Alon, so, so, so here we have similar relations. So, so we have similar functional relations. And then he pointed out, so there is a differential system and, and the, the action of cyclic groups like uh, floating around, around this, uh, the Lancy formula that I will show you in a minute. So, so it's, it fits with, uh, with the three observations for the, for the simple functional relations I, I mentioned before. So, so, but uh, now, so, so now, so it becomes a sort of a, so complicated and, and so, so getting out of control. So, so for example, so here is the, here is the general formula for, for the, for the a, a four term. So, so here, so, the, so here L is the, the H, right? L is the, this H as bit four. So now whatever you see here is, is just a, about a fourth derivative the, the fourth derivative of derivatives of, of, of H, right? So, so, so for example, like if you differentiate this function, this function e to the H four times, and then that's, that will be like the, the, the all the possible fourth derivatives you are, you will able to, to get in here. So of course the, the, the first difficulty is to, to compute this, this rearrangement operator and more precisely is to, to figure out the, these, these expressions of, of the, this underlying function in here. So, so that's the first difficulty. So, and then you have the same functional relations, similar functional relations from, from some variational problem. So, so here is a, so these slides are not intent to, to show any like precise formulas, so just to, to give you a, a impression of this, uh, the complexity of this computation. For example, in these slides, probably you won't even, even to, you won't be even able to find find a equal sign in here because uh, because the, the equal sign is is somehow in the in, in the next page in the next page. So <coughs> so that's why. So it's like uh, I just yeah we need some sort of a. So sort of a new organization, organizing principles. I mean, I mean to study the, 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 this uh, this variational problem. So, okay. So, so since I'm going to to study the, the this variational of this rearrangement operator, so that's why I I have to give you some uh, more precise definition of, of the of the rear, rear, rearrangement operators so i think so in the in the previous slides you've seen examples of, of functions of, of one two and up to uh, four variables right so so in in, in here so you are counting functions of, of, of four arguments so here is the general definition so let's take this uh, fix a self adjoint h so so given any a sort of a smooth function with compact support around this, uh, this the spectrum of, of, of H. So, so you can define a, a linear operator from the, the M plus one tensor to, to, to A. So I, I will view, so probably I will, I'd like to use the language from, from, from this uh, partial homology or cohomology, just, just co-chains, right? A multi-linear functional valued in A. So you can take A to be like a, our favorite example. So, so the, how to obtain it, how to obtain this, the, the, this uh, multi-linear functional or a co-chain given, given F. So I will fix H, okay? So, so it's a basically, so, 
So since we know how to define e to the h, and then we can define the, the more general like extend to, to, to Fourier transform. So first of all, so, so I, I, I'm, I assume smoothness. So uh, the main reason I want to do that, uh, so here I mentioned Schwartz, means that I want to, first of all, if you, I want to write F as a, as a Fourier transform. So formally, so you can, first of all, you can view H as some uh, formal variables, right? So this, the right-hand side is, is, the, is the Fourier transform. And then you, you plug in this operator H0 to HN. So, so how does it, how does this act in on some, the, the rows, like how does it form a multi-linear functional in, in those rows? So it's like you put the row in, in between. It's like, a, like a, this zero means that you multiply at the zero slots, right? So this N means that you, you do this multiplication at, at N slots. So, and then you do some integration. So, so that's it. So, so means that uh, giving you a, a so I will call this F the, the symbol of this, this rearrangement operator. So basically you can write this, uh, this integral like, a, like a, a rearrangement operator uh, obtained, uh, applied on, on this uh, tensor row. So, or you can view this as sort of as a multilinear functional. So in, in, in row, so, so any questions so, so far? So. Yeah, maybe F1, uh, Young. So, yeah. so this looks like a um, multiple operator integral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's the next comment. The comment. Okay, that's right. Go ahead. So, so uh, also, so a, a quick remark is that, uh, so instead of using, using multiplications like uh, H0 to, to HN, you can, you can using like a commutators or, or like a conjugations, right? So, so, so here is the explicit change of variables, right? So because the, the commutator is just you multiply from the right minus multiply from the left. So now you view them as a formal variable, you do, you do this uh, substitution, then, then you, you can define the, you can, you can make sense of, uh, of, of this, uh, this integral in this here. Yeah. So, so, okay, so, so here is a, a remark about this uh, multiple operator integral, integral. So, so I think so. This uh, so for 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 integrals like a, this for operator integrals like like this. So I mean, you can ask us. So can we make sense of this for like a much more general f? Right, so for even like this, this commutator in here is it becomes unbounded. I think it's a. So I think that's then you have to look at the, the tools like a um, multiple operator integrals. I think that's my current understanding. It's like a. So here I think so. In, so because I'm, so I'm, <laughs> so this uh, this construction is out of this uh, modular geometry. I think this uh, sort of a. I, I assume f is a, you know a smooth or Schwartz function. So so. To avoid some analytical difficulties, like encountered in in this uh, mu multiple operator integrals, so so yes, so so so, it's, uh, so I think my remark is that if you you want for more general class of, of the symbol of the underlying function f, and then maybe you want to replace the commutator by h. You know, by by some commutator, by some say Dirac operator. So, so and then you you have to pay much more work in in, in analysis to make sense of those uh, those. Inputs. Young. Yes. Hi, it's Ludwig. Yeah. I have just a linguistic uh, correction. I think Alan said you on your talk to change rearrangement to arrangement operator, and still there. Really? really? Second ah. line. <laughs> God, I, I because I. Oh. In second line. line, second line. Yeah, this yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I will, I will correct that. So yes. So I think so. Yes, I think the connection to cyclic theory has been made by by the work of a uh, of water and a ten. Like a, so, you know, in the study of this asymptotic expansion in in spectral actions. I think so. 
So, so I hope like in the future, we can connect somehow these two projects. I think it's sort of a, this, uh, this rearrangement technique, I think it's a shares, right? So after all, I think we are just you know, fighting for the sort of the same difficulty here. here. So- Well, I should, should note that it's not uh, asymptotic what we're doing. I mean, we don't take the asymptotic expansion where we take the, the kind of the Taylor expansion in powers okay, of the so I perturbation. So, so that's slightly a, different, but I mean, okay. also there we use multiple operator integrals. So that's why it may be interesting to, to see. Yes. Yeah. I think so. I think the main difference is that, uh, so what I do is I just, you know, so we have the sort of the same integral. So, but I sort of, uh, you know, extract information out of this, out of this, this rearrangement, and then view this as a sort of a multilinear function in row. I think that's somehow what you did, you know, like in the same spirit. So, okay, so, so, okay, so, so my, so, so the, the main goal is to, to study this, uh, this variation problem. So I want to take a perturbation in this H and then to take the derivative in this H, and I will understand how does this uh, this multi this multilinear functional change with respect to, to H in this case. So so uh, to 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 further motivate my 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 main results. So I I think I would like to also mention some motivations from Hopf cyclic theory. So in Hopf cyclic theory, like Kolmogorov's local index formula. So we are in a sort of a similar situation. So here, so the 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 turn character of D is, is of the of some lengthy sum of, of this uh, but it's a finite sum of this form. So this uh, this place the this uh, this was this rest you place the row of V0. So so you have some these uh, commutator operators acting acting on this uh, this argument row is so then you have a multilinear functional right so 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 the difficulty is like we have too many sums so we need some sort of a, New organizing principles to 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 like achieve some <laughs> in to achieve some some applications. So so basically, so what Com and Moskovich did is like so. First of all, they they extract so these these operators, these commutators, right? They extract them out to to to, to a half algebra, and then they they look at the the. The you know the, the operators in, in, in cyclic theory. So how do how this operator acting on the on these multilinear functionals, right? And then they transfer this 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 operator to 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 the to this uh, to this half algebra side via this uh, this characteristic form, uh, the via this characteristic map. So we are going to do the so here next I'm going to do the same thing here. I first extract this. Uh, the information about these uh, multilinear functionals about on, on the symbol F of this rearrangement operator. So now the, the operation I'm studying is, is from variation. So I have some basic operations in, in variation. I just want to extract this. Uh, I want to study how the, this basic operation leads to the corresponding change on, on symbols. So, so that's the, I think that's the sort of a, similar ideas behind in this. So, so what are the basic operations from, from variation? So, so first of all, it, it's the differentiation. So, so you consider a derivative or alternatively, you can consider the, the one parameter group, group of automorphisms, automorphisms attached to this derivation. And then, so the der derivation is just uh, obtained by, by differentiating in, in this parameter T. So, and then you, so, okay. So, and then using the, using the same spirits, you can, uh, so given any deriv derivation on A, right? You can extend this derivation on, on the rearrangement operator. Like, uh, so, so I apply this uh, one parameter group in, in H and then I take the derivative. So that's the, that's the definition of, the, of this variation. And then I see, I want to study how does it change on, at a level at the level of, uh, of, of symbols, at the level of, of symbols of this rearrangement operator. So I think this for the right hand side looks very much like you have a DF, it's like a partial I of F times DXI, right? This is like DSI, this is like a 
partial partial i of f. So so now so so this uh, so this this j labels the, the positions of multiplications. J j equals zero. You multiply from the from left when you when you acting on row one and row two. So so like one is is multiplication in the middle. Two is multiplication on the right. So so the the transformation here is given by. So the transformation is it, here is given by divided difference. I think you, I think probably I should better to write divided difference in here, right? So since so here we 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 start with a function of already like several variables. I I, I fix say the j's variable and I apply the divided difference. So and then I increase this uh, the the number of arguments by one. Then I have to shift off after that from j to j plus one, j plus two, j plus two until n plus one. So, so here is the, the, the transformation. So while the, the explicit transformation is, it doesn't matter. So, so but uh, let's say we, we just have some transformations on, on symbols, right? So a uh, similar thing, so in, in here <clears throat> is that uh, the, the next basic operation is that, uh, so now you have a, Multilinear functional in, in row one and row n. So what what if this one of the row i is one, or like a one of the row i commutes with uh, with with h, and then you have a reduction, right? So because it's one, you can just uh, throw throw it from anywhere you want. Say I want to throw it to to the very left. So and then it means that uh, you can reduce the, this number of the arguments of, of the of the symbol by one. So. By, by setting xj is equal to xj plus one. So now you have a, a, a function of n plus one variable. Now the result is a function of, a, of n variable. By, so geometrically it restricts to, to some hyperplane. So, so now it's comes in more interesting. So now, so, so as before, so we only consider sort of a differentiation now so one, so now we want to consider integration. So now we need a, a actual ingredient. So it's a, it's, I will use the same phi zero to denote a, denote a tracial functional. So it's think of it like an integration. So I wanted to have a, the, this a trace property. And then you can, <coughs> you can, you can uh, allow the, so once with this trace property, so you can, there are some, <coughs> so then you can, Move things around like uh, you can move the this uh, factor from the very right to the to the very left. So now it becomes plus in here. So for example, like uh, if you have a so if so if you look at the e expression in the middle, right? So once you apply a trace, so now you have some simplification. You can move the 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 factor from on the very right to, to the left. So then you can sort of uh, re reduce the number of the <clears throat> the argument by one in, in here. So here is the, the transformation. So, so, so you have some simplification in like, like this. So I think so, so this, uh, this is the, the non, the actual degeneracy from, from the duality between the cyclic category to the cyclic op category. So, I think. so this is the, the actual, this is the, this actual degeneracy, I think in, a, in, in cyclic, cyclic theory. So, so I, I think the most important thing is that, uh, so first of all, we can, now we can uh, simply, so then the, the general like a linear form, multi-linear form is, is of this, right? So because once we have a trace, we can always reduce the, the number of arguments by one. So, so here is the, the general form of our, our multi-linear functional. So, so I, I want to consider cyclic permutations on, on rows. So, and then which leads to the corresponding cyclic, cyclic permutations on, on the, cyclic permutations on, on the arguments of, of the symbol. So, 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 okay. So to, to, to summarize, so I'm running out of the, of the time. So to summarize this, uh, so, So have introduced a, a bunch of uh, you know the operators. So on the on the 
on the space of symbols, let's denote it by, by C of N, the, the space of symbols with the N plus one arguments. So like, a, so I want to view it as, as a category. So the, these are symbols, they are the, the objects. And uh, these are basic transformations from variations. They, are, they form the generators of, of, the, of the morphisms. So, so, so the main result is that, uh, so this, uh, this set of uh, generators of morphs from variation, so, so I obtain almost a cyclic category. So, so here's the, the, diff, the, the same. So, so, so these slides list the, so the, you know, the, the face map and the, de, the degeneracy map. So the, the sort of a simplicial and the co-simplicial structure still holds as in the cyclic category. And the, this compatibility between the cyclic and the simplicial structures so holds in this. So, so what's changed is, is marked by, by this green part. So, so now, so the, so the, the compatibility between simplicial and co-simplicial have to be modified a, a little bit. So, so in a cyclic case, the, the, this, uh, this uh, orange part is just, is just one identity. So, so, the, so the, I think that the new input in, in here is, the, is, is this, so the, this partial derivative it comes from the fact that, right? So for the divided difference, when you, when you take the, the confluent case, you recover the partial derivatives. And, uh, and this property is, is another way to say that the Leibniz, the, the Leibniz rule of, of, uh, for, for, for the divided difference. I think so. So, so I think I'm running out of time to, to make a, <coughs> So, okay, so, so please, please allow me to have one or two more minutes. So, so to, I mean, so once you specialize the, the symbols to, to a special class, like of, of, sep, of separating variables, means that they are the, this algebraic tensor product. So, and then you, you look at those, all those maps I defined before, it's like a, you know, the, the, the degeneracy map and the cyclic map, it's agree with what happens in, in the, in a cyclic theory for, for, for an algebra. So this, uh, this. So, and then what's the difference is that a sort of a, uh, the, the face map, which so, sort of goes up, increase the number of arguments by one. So, so because of the divided difference, so like a, it, it's, it's increased the, the, say of a function of one argument, then the, the divided difference is a function of two arguments. It's kind of a, you have a co-product co uh, uh, op operator behind. So, and it, it has some, uh, so, I mean, the, the difference is that uh, this, this is the Swidler notation, but uh, for most of the functions, you, you don't have finite sum. So probably that's the, that's the main difference from the, this algebraic setting. But anyhow, it sort of, it, it shares some, some co-associativity like, like this if you allow sort of a suitable infinite sum. So this, uh, this co-associativity, so it's, uh, it can be derived from the fact that uh, this uh, divided difference, it's, it's a symmetric function in, in its arguments. So, and then, so this, uh, this phase operator, it's, it's just, uh, you, it's the, the same like in Hoff cyclic theory. So it's, you apply the co sort of the co-product. So, so on, on the, on the say, for example, the J's, Trace factor, so so and then so this uh, so that's why you so we don't have a so the main reason we don't have sort of the the cyclic, the usual cyclic cyclic theory so because of this this co-algebra and algebra structure so they are not compatible right so that's the so from this uh, from the standard relations between uh, divided difference and the derivative so now this uh, these morphisms will include all the partial derivatives, and here is the the Leibniz property. So, okay, the, I think the final remark I would like to make is that uh, so okay, so in the Hopf cyclic theory, so the the co-product is derived from this Hopf action principle, right? And then we sort of we have another kind of a co-product from from variation. Maybe I think this. Uh, maybe there is some deeper relations between these two co-products. I think maybe from like a transgression, right? The class. So, so which this part I, just my uh, hunch I, like this. Maybe uh, I think there is 
could be some interesting properties, probably properties between these type of a co two co-products. One is from this half life in its property, and the other is from, from variation, I think. So. Okay, so this is the, the end of my talk. I will stop here. Thanks so much. So thank you, Yang. Thanks for sharing these um, great new structures that appear. Are there questions? Uh, more questions. Maybe just about this last uh, thing. Um, is it something that is kind of under development? I mean, to, to find out all these kind of uh, this obcyclic um, structure? Uh, yes. So, so far, I don't know like uh, how to proceed in this. Uh, I, I, yes, my goal is to, to sort of uh, maybe to find, to, to find some like a, uh, you know, cohomological algebra structures to, to fit in this, uh, in this computation, I think. I think the first thing to do is that I think so, yeah, one thing to do is one can sort of implement this, uh, uh, these relations into, into this A4 term computation. I think it will lead to some great cancellation. I think the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the very small, like a one page formula of, uh, of con facade computation sort of admits a lot of, uh, of simplica simplifications. I think on the other hand, I think it's like, a, Yes, I think it's a, so I think there sh should be, yes, to find some new like a homological algebra structures to, to, to facilitate to this uh, sort of a, this uh, rearrangement technique like used in both like, for example, like a, even in local index formula, like a, in, a, in, in, in the spectral action principle, even in this, uh, this computation of heat coefficients, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. So it's kind of a, a, to, a general so question is to, to find more structures behind the, behind all those heat coefficients. I think even though they are they are complicated, like because as from co actual computation, I think should be some nice structure behind. Right, that's my impression. Is there a way to somehow see um, the dimension back in this structure? And for instance, now you're talking about the A four term for an accumulative four torus, but how is that four? I mean, represented oh, here. A four, four. four. I mean, four here. I think corresponds to the to the derivatives. Like, a, if you compute a two, and then it's like a, the 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 result will be sort of a linear combination of second derivatives of of, sec, of, of h. Four will be the fourth derivative of of h. Yeah, but I mean, at this at yeah. this more combinatorial level, I mean. This is some degree in this obcyclic theory. I mean, if you would kind of push this to higher dimensions, for instance, I mean, not imagining how that would look like, knowing the paper of uh, Kohn and- uh, Yes, I think so. I think for example, like uh, if you are doing four, then you, you are require a, a function uh, of four arguments because four can be decomposed as one plus one plus ah, okay. plus one, so there are four. So then, then you need a functions from one to four arguments. Like if you go A6, then you need a function of a, of six arguments, right? So, but, uh, but uh, yes, but uh, the operators that I, I described, so it's to link those, uh, yes, those, those functions from, from different arguments. I think it's like a, so, mm -hmm. like a, yes. Okay, thanks. Is there anything else? If not, then uh, we thank you again, Jan. Thank you. Thanks, and uh, well, we meet each other in uh, two weeks from now. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Have a nice day. Take care. Yeah. One more, some. Oh, okay, time. Say it again, sorry. I think Johnny just say, say ciao. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> ciao. <laughs> That's <was>, uh, <laughs> <I> see. <laughs>